Hi, my name is Rich Harrington. One of the coolest things about Adobe Premiere Pro is its ability to work with native files. Now, most folks are using this for things like DVC Pro or XD Cam or maybe DSLR. The fact that you could bring in these camera original media and not have to deal with transcode or long wait times. But it doesn't stop there. Premiere Pro CS6 adds support for all of the RED formats, including 5K and ARRI RAW. So you could bring this material in right from the camera. This means you could be on set and start doing a rough edit, or in the case of RED, you can have great interchange and actually adjust the source settings during your edit or exchange color information with RED Cine X. So this is a really flexible and powerful workflow. Of course, those RAW files are pretty big, so you might want to look at having a beefy system to handle them. Here's how it works. I've got the media browser open here, and I've got a RED folder and an Alexa folder. Let's start with the Alexa. I'll just drill in and it makes a folder for each shot and when I go into that you'll see that it automatically picks up that it's an RE RAW file and there's the clip. Same sort of ability here, I've got that, I could drag through and take a look at my clip and see what's there. And that works great. You might not see hover scrub necessarily but once it starts to cache the file I'm even doing hover scrub here to look at all the contents of that clip without even having to transcode or anything else. So there's the clip there and you see that I could drag through and get a good preview of the content of that clip and see what's there. When you're ready it's just a quick right click and you choose import and it will bring that into the project. I'm working less than ideal here for a reason. I brought that raw file in and I'm going to drop it into a sequence. I'm running off of a USB 2 bus powered hard drive. The absolute worst way to try to edit robust footage. And you see here, as I start to play it back, it's dropping a couple of frames. But look, I'm using the world's cheapest hard drive, and I'm still able to bring in raw footage. And that's at full quality. You want to drop that down so it's a little bit less quality here. It doesn't have to debayer at the maximum resolution. And what you'll see here is that the playback will actually improve. There we go. So you can reduce the burden a bit. Now, obviously, don't edit raw footage off of a bus-powered USB hard drive. There's tons of great storage vendors out there that have performance storage. We've got all sorts of options. If you're on a Mac, you might look at Thunderbolt. On a PC, USB 3 RAIDs, eSATA, Mini SAS. There's all sorts of great ways to connect this. But go for a rated performance drive. But the simple fact that I could be loading up footage and reviewing it off of a bus-powered drive on a laptop is amazing. This means that I could start the post-production process on the plane ride home from the shoot. Let's take a quick look at RED for a second. I'll go ahead here and go back to my media browser. And I want you to see how RED behaves in a similar way. I'll go into that clip there. There's my RED files. They load in. Makes a nice preview thumbnail. And the same thing works. I've got hover scrub. If you decide you want to import clips, just a quick right click and you can choose import. And it'll bring them into your project. I could also double click and it will load it into the source monitor if I want to work that way. So there's my red clips. Let's just put this one into a sequence to take a look at it. And you see we've got the nice shot here. And I want to go ahead and adjust that clip. Well, fortunately, with RED, you get all the ability to modify the clip. So I can go here into Source Settings, and it's going to open up the RED R3D Source Settings. And now you can load from the RED Media Database, if you've got RED Cine X or things that came from on set, or you can go ahead and actually start to process. So I could take advantage of things like HDR, if this was a 5K or a RED Epic file. I could adjust the debayer detail. I could re-white balance the shot very easily. And what I really like is the ability to adjust the ISO. Notice I could adjust the ISO to change the sensitivity to this shot after the fact. And you got great controls over things like the shadows. I'll set that back to a thousand there. And I can even change the gamma curve to something like Rec 709 for broadcast for HD. I could play with the overall exposure, bring out the individual color channels, 
and all of this is going back to the original red file. Plus notice, total controls here for curves, lift, gamma, and everything else. So you've got great options here for processing your image to really create a custom look. I can open up those highlights there a little bit, pull the shadows up too, or back down, and you see total responsiveness, which is just awesome. So working raw requires a beefy system, requires beefy hard drives, but I wanted you to see how even with working off of a bus power drive, I can go ahead and start to look at my footage and process it, as well as develop the initial look. This sort of power works great with Premiere Pro. Just make sure you go ahead and run on a system that can handle it. Things like a good GPU and plenty of processing power and RAM are really going to come in handy. My name is Rich Harrington. Thanks for checking this out.